Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we talked about merge sort and walk through the implementation. This time, we're going to analyze the algorithm and see how efficient it is. Let's go ahead and get right to it. Stability. As long as the merge function is implemented correctly, merge sort is a stable algorithm. The key is using the less than or equal operator in the comparison statement. So even if the compared values are equal, the one on the left is moved first, maintaining the left to right ordering. Adaptability. Merge sort is not an adaptive algorithm, meaning there isn't a significant performance improvement for sorted or nearly sorted lists. Regardless of how sorted the list may be initially, the same number of splits and merges will occur. Space complexity. In this series, up until now, every sorting algorithm has had order one space complexity. Merge sort, on the other hand, requires a bit more because of the use of temporary arrays to store left and right. The first split uses up space for n elements, half on the left and half on the right. As we recurse down the left side, the amount of additional space required is cut in half each time. So we get a series that looks like this. As we work our way back up the left side, allocated space is freed by the delete statements before recursing right. Because of this, the maximum amount of space used is equal to the deepest recursion path, not the whole tree. This means that all we need for the space complexity calculation is the series we just discovered. This particular instance is known as a geometric series, which conveniently for us comes with its own formula to calculate the sum. Assuming the series is infinite, the sum is equal to the following. Where A is equal to the first term and R is equal to the common ratio between terms. Plugging in 1 as the first term and 1 half as the common ratio, we end up with 2. So the amount of additional space required is somewhere between n and 2n, or big O of n. Time complexity. As we did with selection, bubble, and insertion sort, this analysis will be based on the number of comparisons made. All comparisons take place in the merge function, so let's take a look at that one first. The comparison statement is contained within the first loop. The best case scenario is exiting that loop as soon as possible to minimize the number of comparisons. This scenario occurs when the largest element of one sorted sublist is smaller than the first element of the other sorted sublist, which means one list is completely iterated through before even touching the other one. This translates to n over 2 comparisons because the last two loops don't make any comparisons at all. The worst case scenario occurs when the two largest elements are contained in opposite lists. In that case, every possible comparison is made, or n minus 1 comparisons. In big O standards, both cases have order n time complexity. Back in the merge sort function, we find three statements that are directly tied to the total number of comparisons, the call to merge, and the two recursive calls. The recursion can easily be visualized with the recursion tree. As you can see, the sublists are repeatedly divided in two until they reach a size of one. K represents any given recursion level. Here, K equals zero, K equals one, K equals two, and so on until we get to the bottom level K. The first step is to determine how much work the merge function has to do per level. For example, recursion level 2 calls merge 4 times, but recursion level 0 only calls merge once. So is level 2 really doing 4 times the amount of work? Well, let's find out. Notice that the number of subproblems increases by a power of 2 at each level, specifically 2 to the power k. But at the same time, the size of each subproblem decreases by that same ratio, ultimately canceling each other out. So at each level, merge works on all n elements. Thus, the answer to step one is, merge does order n amount of work per level. The next step is to determine how many levels of recursion this work is being performed on. We know that there are k levels, but how do we figure out the value of k in terms of n? Well, we can actually use one of these formulas to solve for k, but which one? We don't know how many subproblems are at level k, so this one won't work. 
This one, on the other hand, will work because we know the size of each subproblem at level k is 1. Set this formula equal to 1 and solve for k. We end up with k equals log n levels. So order n amounts of work log n times, n log n. Note that log n is number of levels minus 1. For example, assume n equals 8. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 levels. But log 8 equals 3. That's because the last level returns immediately after the base case. So no merge happens there. Just here, here, and here. Okay, now let's dive a little deeper and prove this using some algebra. We'll even use the exact results from the merge analysis, starting with worst case. Let's use a function t of n to represent the total number of comparisons for input size n. So what happens when the list size is only 1? Right, it returns immediately after the base case, so zero comparisons. Otherwise, the total number of comparisons is calculated with the formula 2 times t of n over 2 plus n minus 1. This position represents the number of subproblems, and this position represents the size of each subproblem. Here's a visual representation of this formula. This t to the n over 2 calculates all comparisons in the left subtree, and this one does the same for the right subtree. To figure out the other levels, we need to expand or unroll the recursion using substitution. I'll put the part being substituted in brackets. The two empty boxes are where we put the input size, which is n over 2. n over 2 divided by 2 is n over 4. This shows that we need to do n over 2 minus 1 comparisons two times. Simplified, we get 4 times t of n over 4 plus 2n minus 3. Repeating the same process for the next level, we get 4 times 2t of n over 8 plus n over 4 minus 1, and then add the outside, plus 2n minus 3. And simplified again, 8 times t of n over 8 plus 3n minus 7. We could go on and on like this, but we should be able to see a pattern now to help us solve this recursive relation. As we figured out earlier, k equals log n. So we just plug that in and solve. 2 to the power log n is equal to n. This translates to t of 1, which is 0. This part is n log n, and then minus n plus 1. So worst case is n log n minus n plus 1. And we do the exact same thing for best case. t of n equals 2 times t of n over 2 plus n over 2. The first substitution gives us 2 times 2t two of n over 4 plus n over 4, then the outside plus n over 2. Simplified, we get 4 times t of n over 4 plus n. For the next level, 4 times 2t of n over 8 plus n over 8 plus n. In terms of k, this recursive relation is 2 to the power k times t of n over 2 to the power k plus kn over 2. Finally, plugging in log n for k gives us best case, which is n over 2 times log n. We can see that best case performs a little better, but both are still classified as n log n in big O standards. And of course, that means average case is as well. Well, that concludes the analysis of merge sort. Overall, it's a very efficient algorithm for sorting large lists, as long as memory isn't an issue. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. Until next time, thanks for watching.